Good morning, Twitch.tv. Good morning to YouTube as well. And of course, good morning, Mini Motorways. Let's go to Zurich for today's daily challenge where we will have four traffic lights and four roundabouts right off the bat, which of course will encourage us to take the bridges and tunnels and motorways that we so desperately need in Zurich. But hey, it'll be fine. Let's talk about last night's edition of AEW Dynamite. I wanna talk about three things that happened on Dynamite last night. Three specific segments, angles, incidents, what have you. Three different things happened on Dynamite last night. Well, several things happened on Dynamite. We're gonna talk about three of them. One of the things that happened is a heel, a bad guy, was coming out for his match and a babyface, a good guy, jumped him from behind. They fought, and the heel wound up going through a table and slamming his head on a guardrail. Okay? Bad, dangerous thing to happen. The heel wound up recovering enough to wrestle and win a match later that night, because as I said, the heel had been scheduled to wrestle a match already. So the heel was able to wrestle his match. He came back. He won. Good for him. It helps that the heel is the world champion. He's big and tough and strong. But still, dude got into a fight. Dude got put through a table and slammed into a guardrail. Dude wound up just fine. That's one thing. Here is a second thing that happened. A heel... A, a, a bad person invited a baby face a good person for a champagne toast to celebrate their mutual success and their past association and the fact that they were going to wrestle for a championship at the upcoming pay-per-view it turned out that the dastardly heel had set a trap and the champagne toast was a ruse to create an excuse for this nefarious villain to throw a glass of champagne in the babyface's face and then punch her a lot. They got into a fist fight. There was punching. And then another babyface came out and ran off the heel and it was all fine and good. And, and the babyface who was victimized cut a wrestling promo about it on the internet and they're going to have a wrestling match. This is a thing that happened on a professional wrestling show. It makes sense to me. Here is a third thing that happened on All Elite Wrestling's Dynamite program last night. Uh, by the way, we're going to... There's got to be a way to... Can I... I guess I can just do this. Like, we can just roundabout this way. Yeah, we're just going to create a, a silly little roundabout going this way. We're going to have these dark blues come in here, go out that way, go up here. And this will maintain something akin to 1B1R. There we go. Here's a third thing that happened on AEW Dynamite last night. Some heels did an interview segment wherein they noted that they have an upcoming pay-per-view match against a team of babyfaces. A team of babyfaces they've fought before, in fact. One time, in fact, the last time, this team of babyfaces was supposed to fight this team of heels. The babyfaces won. The good guys were victorious on a big stage. Good for the good guys. But wait, the heels say, you only won because we were distracted by the cruel, awful, nefarious actions of your friend, who we won't name, but your friend, who we won't name, did a terrible thing and was rightly fired from the company because of it. And these heels said that it was only because they were distracted from their preparation for their wrestling match by their duties as executive vice presidents that they were able to that they were forced, rather, to, to deal with the situation created by these babyfaces' terrible friend. Only through that distraction 
did the the babyface wrestlers win the wrestling match? Okay. And then the hated heels played video footage of the incident in question, which I will now describe completely accurately, without exaggeration. Backstage at a wrestling show, a wrestler got in another wrestler's face. They exchanged what appeared from a distance to be rather terse words. This went on for some time. Think so, I think Sportsman just described just discovered the subscribers only button, which is a good thing for a moderator of the channel to know exists. Honestly, it's not a big deal. You turned it off right away. <laughs> Uh, let's grab, I mean, I really should take a motorway because motorways are versatile. Yeah, fine. All right, we're going to take a motorway even though I want a bridge here. In the fullness of time, this is going to be a bridge, but time is not full. We can, we can delay it a little bit. Here, you come down this way. It's going to be fine. Motorway number one is going to service this business. Everything's cool. So, in this video footage, which I should note is from an event eight months ago. But it was, according to these awful villainous heels, it was related to the time that, uh, the, the last time these two teams fought or whatever. So, in this video footage, a wrestler gets in another wrestler's face. They exchange words. The words appear to be, mm, tense. Then, the baby face shoves the heel. The heel does not like that. The babyface applies a headlock. The fight is broken up. End of video. No, wait, actually, the babyface storms off. End of video. Now you may be thinking to yourself, self, well that doesn't sound like that big a deal at all. I mean, you've described a hated heel being put through a table and slammed into a guardrail, and that hated heel was just fine. And you've described a baby face having champagne thrown in her eyes and punched repeatedly, and that baby face was just fine. And these people are going to have wrestling matches about this. What is so special about a baby face shoving a heel and getting into a headlock scrap with him? Well, you see, naive little wrestling fan, this one was real. <sighs> because the baby face who shoved the heel was CM Punk. And the heel who got shoved was Jack Perry. And that fight was real. Which... I mean, okay, yeah, it was real. And if in real life you get into a tense argument with your coworker and then provoke a physical alt begin a physical altercation by shoving him and then put him in a headlock, you should not be employed by the company anymore. And in real life, CM Punk is not employed by All Elite Wrestling or independently contracted with All, uh, All Elite Wrestling anymore. However, <laughs> you may be thinking to yourself, naive little wrestling fan, that it seems rather silly to air footage of a man shoving another man and applying a headlock on a show where a man puts a man through a table and slams his head against a guardrail or a show where a lady punches a lady and, and tosses champagne in her face. You may be thinking it's silly to air this footage and particularly silly to air this footage with the express intent of creating sympathy against the baby face. Oh no, the baby face started a fight on a wrestling show. Oh no! <sighs> but again, we are supposed to feel differently because this one was real! 
I know I'm, I know I don't have my camera on, but I hope you can hear the, the, the spooky wavy fingers that I'm doing when we say that the CM Punk Jack Perry fight was re Yeah, okay. So, AEW decided it would be a good idea. And I say AEW, I really mean Tony Khan and maybe also the Young Bucks. Maybe the Young Bucks were part of the decision that led to this. <sighs> they were part of the decision-making process that led to this nonsense. So Tony Khan and the Young Bucks and maybe some other people thought it would be a good idea to air the actual security camera footage capturing the actual physical altercation between CM Punk and Jack Perry that actually did take place backstage at AEW's all-in pay-per-view at Wembley Stadium last fucking August. And the reason they did this is because CM Punk gave an interview with Ariel Helwani, noted schmuck, wherein he said, oh, I didn't, it wasn't a big deal. I, I, I didn't punch a guy. I maybe choked him a little bit. And the, and the footage doesn't even show CM Punk punching a guy. It shows CM Punk shoving a guy, but it doesn't so, show CM Punk punching a guy until maybe after they were in like a pull apart or whatever. This is, as they say in the old country, not a big fucking deal on a professional fucking wrestling show, you fucking idiots. But CM Punk gave an interview and CM Punk was allowed to control the narrative for a day and Tony Khan couldn't possibly let that stand when the facts were on his side. Please ignore the fact that the facts are not actually on his side in this case and everything Punk said happened is, broadly speaking, what the video shows happening. But Tony Khan got a hair across his ass and listen, usually... The last time Tony Khan got a hair across his ass this big, it was a hair across his ass about just how fucking bad WWE is, and he created a good wrestling company out of it. This time, Tony Khan got a hair across his ass about CM Punk not presenting the absolute entire truth of an incident and decided to shoot off his own dick. Which, I mean, I don't have a billionaire's dick, but it seems like it would hurt. I don't know why you would do that if you're a person, but I'm not Tony Khan. Tony Khan decided it would be a good idea to dredge up, once again, this months old drama where everybody, by the way, these greens have got to get over to this square or we're going to crap out under 300. And that's just, that's just a thing, you know, that's just a thing. Um, are these greens going to get up here? Are we going to be anything even approaching okay? No. No, we're not, actually. Welp. 280 commuters. That's a, uh, that's a, uh, well, I do have a hard out. We absolutely positively have to be done by 750 because I absolutely positively have to be on a video call at uh, eight. So bottom 15% drop those samurai slams. So hold on. So AEW decides it would be a really good and smart idea to air the video footage of the fight between CM Punk and Jack Perry, which CM Punk started in some attempt to disprove the claim that CM Punk made in an interview with Ariel, Ariel Helwani that, like, if we're going to be generous, a couple hundred thousand people see, saw. And they did this on their wrestling show, which several hundred thousand people saw, thereby putting more attention on the... Listen, it was a bad and dumb thing that AEW did in the middle of what was independent of that, a very bad episode of AEW Dynamite. Like... I've said something like this on the channel previously. Something like 70% of episodes of AEW Dynamite have good solid wrestling and fine angle advancement and you can predict everything that's about to happen and it's all well-crafted, decent storytelling and it's fine and good or whatever. 
But if you want to skip it, you can skip it, and that's okay. That's television. Like, 25% of episodes of AEW Dynamite have something really, really fucking great happen. Like, some really awesome match. Like, every episode of Dynamite is going to have some good wrestling matches. Some episodes of Dynamite have amazing wrestling matches. Some episodes of Dynamite have the best wrestling matches you've ever seen. They have the most hilarious angles. They have hot debuts. They have hot chicks. They have whatever you want to see in professional wrestling, and it's all coming at a mile a minute, and it's amazing, and it's awesome, and you love it, and you're like, wow, that two hours of television flew by. I can't believe it's already time for the main event because this show has been fucking awesome. That's like 25% of AEW Dynamites. And, well, then there's 5% of AEW Dynamites. And every once in a while, AEW Dynamite just kind of sucks. Like, the best wrestling match on AEW Dynamite last night was either... And listen, I did not intently watch either of these matches, so I'm not going to definitively say which was better. But it was definitely either Adam Copeland versus Penta El Cerro Miedo, which is a cool, interesting styles clash that you never thought would you would see happen and can only happen in AEW in this moment, but also featured a 50-something-year-old washed-up Canadian trying to do lucha with a late 30s kind of washed up luchador and well you know i used the phrase washed up twice in that sentence so it wasn't that great it was fine and good because those guys are pros and adam copeland bless his heart is trying really hard and having a lot of fun out there but it wasn't great and that match was probably the best match on Dynamite. And if it wasn't that match, it was Samoa Joe versus Dustin Rhodes, which is the world champion heel I had mentioned earlier, ha having to drag the 50 something year old, totally washed up older brother of the guy who just won WWE's world title in the main event of WrestleMania through a bad, slow pedestrian wrestling match on television in front of Oh, 230 of their closest friends. So. Yeah. That was either the best or the second best match on AEW Dynamite last night. So. That wasn't a Dynamite that has a ton of great wrestling in it, honestly. But, you know. It also featured an appearance from Kazuchika Okada, one of the most charismatic wrestling performers of all time. He um, he, he squashed a guy and cut a two-sentence promo, and okay. Um, it featured... <laughs> yeah. It just... Even independent of the stupid CM Punk bullshit, it was not going to be a good episode of Dynamite. The one thing I will say, and then we're going to, you know what, Sports One correctly points out that nadir is a five letter word. So there we go. Um, it, the one thing I will say, and this is not necessarily a suggest, this is not a defense of last night's episode of Dynamite, which was terrible, it was a very bad episode of Dynamite. It was the, oh, I'm just going to say 12th worst episode of AEW Dynamite of all time and that's off the top of my head and it could be overly generous, okay? I will say this was not an episode of Dynamite that made me think that as a company, AEW doesn't know what they're doing. I think a lot of things came together and also Tony Khan got a stupid hair across his ass. And listen, Sometimes your stupid billionaire boss is gonna get a hair across his ass. It's just a thing. It's just a thing that's gonna happen every now and then. Again, the last time Tony, Cron Tony Khan got a hair this big across his stupid billionaire ass was when he created All Elite Wrestling, which in a vacuum is fine. It's good. It's good that that happened. 
So there weren't there weren't WWE tropes all over the place, which is good. There were bad camera usages all over the place. Someone has discovered the crash zoom and is very ena- very enamored with the crash zoom. And buddy, listen, crash zooms have their place. They aren't everywhere. Also, someone thought it would be a good idea to give Mercedes Monet five minutes to talk, which, <sighs> boy, that, um, mm, not the choice I would have made, but hey, again, it's not my wrestling company. I'm just a guy talking about it on the internet, so. So last night's episode of Dynamite was bad, but not in a way that made me think the company is doomed. So that's nice. This, uh, this wordle now. Sonny has correctly noted that it can't be amuse because there's no A. It could be something that ends with use. Sports One says he's already done with Mercedes Monet, which I kind of think the idea is that she's going to be a heel sooner rather than later, but... The sooner isn't sooning enough, basically. (sighs) What about clues? Now granted, clues isn't a word in this spelling, but you know. Well, sports pun, it, it, it could be that she's gonna, gonna do a, a babyface program with Chris Statlander first. And hey, that would mean that we get heel Chris Statlander, which could be fun. I don't think we've had that throughout the entirety of All Elite Wrestling. And we've had Chris Statlander through the entirety of All Elite Wrestling. Now granted, she's been on the shelf with an exploded knee for like mm, 45% of the existence of All Elite Wrestling, but still. Uh, what about, uh, what about clues? Could it be clues? It can't be clues. What about, uh, oh, lose? Now, granted, it, it's not a lose because that's not a word, but, you know. Uh, does somebody want to sing the blues? No? Okay. Um, could it be opus? Now, granted, that's also not a word. Um, Man, there are a lot of words that aren't words that it could be. I wonder if there are any words that are words that it, well, it can't be guys because there's the, the use in the wrong place and there's no I. We already know that. Um, hmm. What about? Um, emush. Now, granted, emush isn't a isn't a word. But, hmm, what about, uh, Ubesf? Ubesf, not a word? Interesting. All right, well, you know what? Let's just create a word out of uh, five letters that we haven't used and see if we get anywhere with that. It could be, now, um, well, it definitely can't be folio, but, uh, well, that would be quite a stupid word to pick, actually. What about... Man. So bad at game today. What about bloke? Could absolutely not be bloke, but hey. This is going to give us four four-letter guesses and another shot at finding where the E goes. Okay, we have done a productive. This has been this has been very useful actually, because we know that it's something 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 S E, and we know that those four somethings are L O and U, which means that it basically has to be Laos. Cool. <laughs> That was one of those times where picking a word that you haven't used that 
this here was the was a tremendous guess. It was probably the only way I was getting from here to here in two guesses. So good job, Goog. You're occasionally smart about stuff. Oh God, connections. Trevor Dame is a writer, blogger, Twitter person who talks about professional wrestling a lot. And he reminded me of a true thing that happened in professional wrestling one time. And so we're going to tell a story about a true thing that happened in professional wrestling one time before I forget about it. So Eric Bischoff was the president and head creative guy and dude who's in charge of WCW, right? And at some point in the mid-1990s, Eric Bischoff, top lieutenant of a billionaire, got a hair across his ass. And you may have recently heard about what happens when billionaires get hairs across their ass. Well, the same basic thing happens when the top lieutenant of a billionaire gets a hair across his ass. So Eric Bischoff got a hair across his ass and decided that it would be a good idea for him, Eric Bischoff, legitimate karate person, like guy who's good at karate, to challenge Vince McMahon, guy who's not good at karate, to a karate match. Seems a little unfair, but whatever. It's a fight. So Eric Bischoff decides to challenge Vince McMahon to a karate match because he doesn't like Vince McMahon or something. Vince McMahon's wrestling company is saying mean things about his wrestling company. The thing is, Eric Bischoff decided to challenge Vince McMahon to this fight on Monday Nitro, on television, okay? Not just on television, but on television six days before their pay-per-view event. Vince McMahon responded to this by having his lawyer send Eric Bischoff a letter that essentially said, fuck no, I'm not doing that. What the fuck are you doing? Get my name out of your mouth, you idiot. Now listen, there are very few times, especially on this channel, where I will defend Vince McMahon or I will say that Vince McMahon is right. However, in this particular instance, the exact correct response was for Vince McMahon to send Eric Bischoff a letter written by his attorney that said, in essence, no, I won't do that. What the fuck are you doing? Get my, get my name out of your mouth, you idiot. That was the exact right thing for Vince McMahon to do, and he did it. So... This is how bad Eric Bischoff looks in this story. Vince McMahon is the reasonable party. So Eric Bischoff goes on Nitro, challenges Vince McMahon to a fight at WCW's pay-per-view. Vince McMahon has his attorney send Eric Bischoff a letter, which says, in essence, no, I won't do that. What the fuck are you doing? Get my name out of your mouth, you idiot. Eric Bischoff takes that letter and then goes on his second weekly television program, Thunder, and reads the letter aloud. Eric Bischoff reads the letter from Vince McMahon's attorney, which says, in essence, no, I won't do that. What the fuck are you doing? Get my name out of your mouth, you idiot. He reads that letter on television and then reiterates his challenge to a match, a fight, at WCW's pay-per-view coming up this weekend. Vince McMahon does not respond. And listen, there are two proper responses to Eric Bischoff's course of actions here. One is to have your attorney send another letter which says in no uncertain terms, if you mention my name on your television program again, I am going to sue you. Or to do nothing because everyone already sees how much of an idiot Eric Bischoff is being and you can only fuck this up. Either one of those would be completely reasonable and appropriate and Vince McMahon chose the second one. He did nothing because everyone saw how much of an idiot Eric Bischoff was being and he could only fuck it up. So once again, Vince McMahon is playing this perfectly. Nothing happens between the airing of Thunder and the day of the pay-per-view. 
So at the pay-per-view, Eric Bischoff comes out in a karate gi, ready for his fight with Vince McMahon, which no one ever said was happening, but Eric Bischoff challenged him to a fight on pay-per-view. And then, shock of shocks, Vince McMahon doesn't show up because Vince McMahon owns a wrestling company which is in direct competition with the wrestling company that's putting on the pay-per-view. And he did not consent in any way to be part of this. So he's not there. And when Vince McMahon does not show up, Eric Bischoff has his wrestling referee ring the bell, count to 10, and then count Vince McMahon out of the ring and declare Eric Bischoff the winner. Yay, Eric Bischoff. You won a count out victory over Vince McMahon on pay-per-view in a match that only you consented to. It was very dumb. It was so dumb. It was all of the dumb. It was the most dumb. It was so dumb, Sam. It was just so dumb. And yet, so, so I want everybody to remember that this happened when inevitably Eric Bischoff has opinions about the stupid dumb thing AEW did. Because Eric Bischoff these days is a professional podcast maker person. And Eric Bischoff is an idiot. So he's going to say stupid things about AEW, about how, oh, this was as bad as anything that ever happened in WCW. We never would have done anything like this. Yes, you would have, Eric. You did. You fucking idiot. Now then, let's draw some connections. Sunflare Space has pointed out that ruler, compass, scale, and watch are all tools of measurement. That is true, and there isn't a fifth one of those, so uh, we can pop that right there. Thank you, Sonny. We need God. All right, uh, channel crew. Uh, the channel is, yeah, a channel and a pipe are like the things that go through things and ferry water and such, but, uh, and a line, hold on. There might be a connection there. Um, and a main, like a water main? Yeah, these are all things water go through, right? Things water goes through, there we go. Conduits, that's a fucking word. It's a word that means a thing I was trying to say. God. Uh, Pixie, Bull, Buzz, and Crew are all haircuts. And then Clown, King, Mermaid, and Colonel are mascots? Just general food-based mascots? Are they specifically fast food mascots? Because, like, the clown is Ronald McDonald, the king is the Burger King, the colonel is Colonel Sanders. Who the hell is the mermaid? Just Starbucks? Are you counting Starbucks as a fast food chain so as to say that these are all fast food mascots? Go off, the New York Times! <laughs> Piss off everybody! <sighs> okay. Well, hey, we got a good connections, and now uh, we, mu we must uh, pull at some of these strands because it's all in your head. Oh, Lord. All right, uh, what do we got here? I see Taze, which, oh, I, I suppose Taze might have a Z. Fine. Jerks. It's all in your head, eh? Is this about, like, psychology or hallucinations or... Helmetry? I don't know if helmetry is a word. Helmetry should be a word. Helmetry should be the, the study or the field of head protection. Just in general. Uh, nope, that's not rain. I thought it was rain. Uh, is there a D around here? There is a D. Hey, how about devil? No? Okay, well, I mean, that's going to get me something, but not what I wanted. 
Hmm. And evil, obviously, if you've got devil. Uh, tase is not an English word for the same reason that, like... Well, see, the thing is, Taser is a brand name, right? Taser is the brand name, and the generic term is, like, stun gun or something. So, technically speaking, um, Taze can't can't be accepted as a verb because it's a brand thing. It's like, um... I don't know. It's like if the if the verb for give me a sandwich was subway. Hey, subway me, bro. It, it's not not a word. Incidentally, uh, subway me, bro, is the title of the episode. So, good job, Gook. Exactly. You know, you Q-tipped your ears. No, you didn't. You you applied a cotton swab to the inside of your ear canal in a way that you shouldn't have done. Shame on you. It's actually bad. You should never do that. I may or may not do that every time I get out of the shower. It's fine. I'm not deaf yet. What in the hell is this strands? I can't see anything. I don't know what Debrox is. It's probably gunk you dump in your ear, and well, I don't like the idea of du dumping gunk in my ear. But uh, uh, well, there's fake. Great. We have enough to get a hint now, which we might or might not use. I still have a little bit of time. Uh, grime? No. Can't get to a, to an R there. Can't get to an R there. Uh, I see rent. I definitely see rent. Rent is not in my head. Rent is a thing that exists. Hmm. Does anybody see anything? Because... <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I see boil. I do see boil. I do see boiled. Hold on. It's not like hard-boiled or soft-boiled, right? No? It's not egg humor? Oh, good. It's not egg humor. I have uh, several trans friends who would note that every joke I make is egg humor. But let's move on. Sunny sees fame, which is true. That's right there. That's a thing that can go to your head. Power is a thing that can go to your head. I don't see any P's on this entire puzzle, though, so it's probably not that. Uh huh. Did I already say boil? I don't think I already said boiled. No, well, I did. I said I said boil and boiled just a moment ago, actually. Hmm. We already got fake. Uh huh. Here's ever. What in the hell are we going for here, Strands? I see Advil. That's another brand. And if we have Evil, we do have Live. That's absolutely true. Uh, Sam saw Imagine, which has got to be a good start. Starting in the top left, I am... Nope. There's no A next to this M, so it's not there. Oh, I am A, G. There we go. Imagine. Not one of the words. Okay. <laughs> Sam is not happy with that. Uh, so if we start here again, could we get to... Ima no, that's the only G. That's the only I. That's the only N. Yeah, it's not going to be like imaginary or imaginary. It's not going to be imaginate, is it? I don't think that... Is that even a word? No. It's not a word. <sighs> um, fuck, guys. What the hell are we doing here? Uh, I see take and taken, but neither of those are going to be the 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 thing. Uh, I am 
No. Hold on. I am A G E. That's a picture in your head. No. Okay. <sighs> hey, have we put together 18 little hint words yet? Because if we've put together 18 little hint words, we can just solve the entire puzzle without having to think about shit. It's like a five square win in tic-tac-toe. It's like, fuck you. It is 740 and we do have to do the immaculate grid. You know what? Fuck it. Uh, fantasy. Oh, hi. All right. I see that. Great. Give me another one. Uh, reverie. That's a, that's a deep cut word. Good job, the New York Times. Uh, wh what do we have over here? This figment. Sure. Oh. Oh, here's the spangrum. It's, uh, it's make-believe. There we go. I can't believe I didn't see believe. But, you know. Uh, hold on. There we go. Make-believe. How is imagining this and not a word? Uh, just to fuck with you, Sam. Just to fuck with you personally. Here's illusion. Nope, nope, nope. There's no B in illusion. And then this over here is what? Daydream? Yep. Yay! We did it! We definitely didn't completely rely on the hints, fucker. Where's that New York Times games editor? He tried to fuck on me. Oh, Lord, we need pirates and rangers and giants and padres and dudes what struck out 2,000 dudes in their career and dudes what only played for only one team, and we need to do it in nine minutes because I want to get out of here and put on clothes before I get on the Zoom call. Anyway, uh, a dude who only played for the Giants is uh, Buster Posey. Buster Posey, there we go. A dude what only played for the Padres is Tony Guinigliero. That's not actually a guy, but you know what I mean. A dude who struck out 2,000 dudes in his career and only played for one team is, uh, I don't know, Adam Wainwright? Adam Wainwright feels about right for that, right? Yay, I was correct about a thing. A uh, dude who played for the Giants and Rangers is Mike Yasterzemski. Not Carl. What? 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 <laughs> Who did Mike Yastrzemski... Mike Yastrzemski came up with it. What did you put there? Hold on. How am I wrong about Mike Yastrzemski? He went... He came up with the... He went to the Phillies? I thought he I thought he came up with the Rangers and then he traded him to the Giants. Hold everything. We're looking up Mike Yastrzemski because I'm very confused. Mike Yastrzemski. On the Nationals. No, he played the Nationals. He was a prospect. He was a, he was an Orioles prospect, apparently. And they traded him to the Giants. Well, balls. Annoying. A dude who struck out 2,000 dudes in his career and played for the Rangers is Nolan Ryan. A dude who struck out 2,000 dudes in his career and played for the Pirates is, uh, who's that one good Pirates pitcher? Eh, fuck that. It's Garrett Cole. Has Garrett Cole gotten to 2,000 strikeouts yet? I don't know. 2,000 strikeouts is a lot of strikeouts. Hey, 2,000 strikeouts. Good job, Garrett Cole. Uh, dude who played for the Pirates and Padres is Jamie Moyer, obviously. A uh, dude who played for the Rangers and Padres is Jamie Moyer, actually. And a uh, dude who played for the Giants and Rangers is... Uh, no, I think you were serious. You, you were just wrong. I'm correct about it. You won't even let me make the same incorrect guess twice. Good job, the Immaculate Grid. I appreciate that. That's user-friendly game design right there. But I'm trying to do a funny bit, so we're going to say Carl Yastrzemski played for the Giants and Rangers. Oh, he didn't? Really? No? Fuck you too, the Immaculate Grid. Good. 
All right. That is going to do it for us here today on Good Morning Mini Motorways. But the plan is that I will be back tonight at five, or around 5 o'clock for the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles. I do have a doctor's appointment this afternoon, and it is scheduled for 4 o'clock. So there's every chance that I'm still in my doctor's waiting room at 5.15. And if that's the case, we might not have a stream tonight. But, you know... Maybe things will be on time, and maybe they'll start at, like, 5.30. We'll see. We'll see? I'll talk to you later? That sounds like a plan. Have a good day, everybody. Don't do any more stupid shit, AEW. Okay?